Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent computer role-playing game. This week I'm taking a look at a game from a developer that I have covered before. Developed by A. Hagen and Shay Kennedy, Alien Squatter was released on Steam back on October 1st, 2019. Alien Squatter is a bit of an odd one with a non-standard method of play, although more recognizably an RPG than many I've covered lately, so, you know, there is that. It offers a few ways to progress through its relatively brief story, allowing one to try out various different playstyles despite a relatively small game world. The plot of Alien Squatter is about as strange as the game itself. With the human population in decline, humanity has invited various alien races to live on Earth. You play the part of one of these aliens, one of many who have fallen on hard times and squat in a poverty-wracked area outside of the grand city of Privilege. Your goal is to survive and scrape up enough to get into the city of Privilege one way or another. When you start the game, you get the plot introduced to you by a few screens and then select the species of alien that you want to play. There are three to choose from, the Crawlers, the Oracles, and the Biobots, each of which has its own strengths and special abilities to assist you on your way. You then select your best and worst stats out of the three basic ones, Physical, Mental, and Social. Each one is used in various tests that you may come upon while trying to make your way through the game. You then select a save slot and are dumped directly into the game. Once in the game, you simply start by your tent in the park. Each day, your data is saved automatically and you are given a summary of what that day begins with. You can open the menu, which allows you to view the various inventory items and stats you have available. There are five overall stats, three of which are your basic ones I've already mentioned, physical, mental, and social. In addition, there are karma and sick. Doing good or bad deeds will adjust your karma up and down, and exposure to vile or infectious things will increase your sick percentage. And that can fire off a sickness event at the start of certain days, which halves your energy for that day. There are also five generalized resources. Most important is energy. Each step you take takes one energy, and certain actions take up more. If you reach zero energy, your day's exploration ends right there, and if that happens before you reach your tent, you are taken to the clinic instead, which costs money and may result in stat loss. Energy is regained when you rest at your tent, as well as some days giving you the additional chance to pick an additional uh, stat bonus. Additional energy is also given for various calories that you acquire during the day. Calories are the second resource and are simply a measure of the food and other edible items that you find during your exploration. The third resource is easy enough, cash, and can be found on the street, earned in various ways and through various events, or earned by selling pods and junk. Pods and junk are items that you find laying around or earned through events. Aside from being sold for money to a junk store or to the barge master, they may be also used for other events and species-based powers. For instance, the Oracle can take pods and assemble them into an item over time rather than sell recycle them for money. In the menu screen, you can also look at various other things you uncover during play. The inventory lets you view items that you've picked up, including certain consumables like medicine that reduce your sickness, as well as other permanent items that you can find or purchase that give you bonuses to your basic stats or grant special abilities. There is no equipment system per se, so merely possessing these items gives you their bonuses. You can review a list of people and how fond they are of you, which can be raised through interacting with them, as well as take a look at a catalog of other collectibles that you've picked up or items that you find during the course of your exploration. Gameplay itself is very easy. There's only movement through the directional keys, an interaction or selection key, and then the escape or menu key. To interact with most things, you don't even need to hit the interaction key all that much. You simply run into them. This will open a dialog box that explains what the interaction is and may offer various options. The game is rather text-heavy in that regard, with most things relying on these dialog options outright. There are many, many things to do in the game, and as you explore within Alien Squatter, you can unlock additional things to do based on what you own. For instance, simply owning a fishing rod will unlock fishing holes. Obtaining a scanner will allow you to occasionally uncover various jewelry just by walking around, and so forth. A lot of these interactions may require a test off of one of your three basic stats, physical, mental, and social. The higher your particular stat, the better the chance of success, and the chance of success is usually listed, so you have a fair idea of what your chances are. If there's a potential energy cost, that'll be listed as well, so as to keep you from expending all of your energy without notice. While wandering around, you may also hit random encounters. 
These are essentially just tests like any other interaction, although they may be optional. For instance, just because you're given the option to rob somebody that you randomly run across doesn't mean that you have to. It's just an opportunity. An opportunity that may impact your karma. The overall world is comprised of just several screens oriented around your starting locale, the park where you start, the railway, downtown, the wharf, etc. Many of these places have static NPCs and shops that offer things to purchase or possibly work to do to earn money. Each day, new foodstuffs, items, and stashes are scattered throughout the map as well, and at least one NPC will be at a random place each day, meaning that even after you've explored the little world given, you're still going to want to wander around to find resources, keeping you from doing the exact same route every single day. With the randomized events, randomized placement of items, food, and so forth, and the constant pressure of the energy limit each day brings, it can make each day play out a little bit differently, even once you've settled into an overall general routine with your character. You can actually finish the game in just over an hour, although there are several different ways to do so, so even if you explore the game a little bit and you want to try out a few different character types, moralities, etc., you certainly can, either in one playthrough or using different playthroughs. Graphically, Alien Squatter uses a cartoonish lo-fi art style that seems to be a callback to the 8-bit era without being absolutely locked into that aesthetic. The music is actually pretty decent, if a little bit repetitive, but does fit the overall theme of the game itself. I will say that the writing is amusing. There is a fair bit of humor in most of the encounters, even the most minor of them. It can be worth a read rather than just quickly skimming over them if you have the time, and in fact, that's one of the main enjoyment parts of the game. It's very much in line with the developer's previous offering, Void Pyramid, in that regard, and a little bit of quirkiness runs throughout the entire game. I would say that I was kind of wincing at what I thought was a heavy-handed theme right out of the gate where you're playing a downtrodden alien, basically trying to enter the land of privilege. I mean, really? But without giving too much away regarding spoilers, the ending, or at least the one I got, redeemed the premise in a sort of the grass is always greener kind of way, and I can appreciate that remark. Overall, for a budget game, you could certainly do worse. If you enjoy non-standard gameplay with quirky humor and an adventure that doesn't necessarily require you to engage in combat at all, it may be worth taking a look at. The price is certainly within a decent range, at least in my opinion, although if you get a chance to get it on sale, then so much the better. And the different species, ways of earning money, and various NPCs to befriend, collectibles to find, antics to get into, and even places to find overall will help with the overall replayability. In fact, I may go ahead and play it again real quick just to see a couple places that I know I missed that I didn't get to. Now, if you're looking for complexity and tactical finesse, you may want to look elsewhere, because this is really more on the simple kind of things. And on that note, I'm going to wrap it up here. As always, I will leave a link to where you can get it in the description below. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday Alien Squatter. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you're still watching this far, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have supported this channel via Patreon or direct donations throughout the years, without which this channel could not have lasted as long as it has. For those who are feeling particularly generous, you can still support my work through Patreon and now through Subscribestar as well, through the links in the description below.